it's great to see you. Um, I'm here today to talk all about bedtime routine for siblings. So when you've got more than one child and you're trying to juggle that bedtime routine and sometimes it just feels like, hang on a minute, I'm, I'm trying to do something for one and then I need to go to the other and then this one needs me and that one needs me and, ah, and it all just feels too much. Well, don't panic. We're going to get that all streamlined for you and make it so that it just works. Now, this is going to be particularly helpful for those of you who are usually doing the bedtime routine with more than one child by yourself. It is a little bit easier when you have another pair of hands on deck. So if you have your, your partner, your spouse, or another family member, or somebody that can help you out, then of course it can help because you know, one could be reading a bedtime story with one child while the other is making sure that the other one's having a bath or brush their teeth or whatever it might be. So it, of course it is easier when there are more than one parent or caregiver to lead the bedtime routine but if you're on your own and I'm sure all of you will be or have been at some stage or another it is a juggle okay so things you can do to make that easier and this is coming from a mum of two that are 21 months apart and I've juggled this from babies toddler time right through to um, 9 11 year old children so I know what this is like um, both doing it by myself and doing it with my husband to help as well. So I, I completely know where you're coming from. A top tip for you is getting them ready for bed at the same time. Now, that does need to, that they do need to be age appropriate. There's no point in asking your 15 year old to get ready for bed at the same time as your two year old. Um, that's quite an extreme example, but be sensible with that. But more often than not, even if you're talking about a two year old and a seven-year-old, even if their bedtime might be slightly separate, there's still no reason why they can't get ready for bed at the same time. And here's why. If you do the bedtime routine at the same time, so they go um, to the bathroom, there's bathroom activity, maybe a bath or a shower, um, whatever it might be, or a wash, there's probably teeth brushing involved and getting changed, getting ready for bed in the bathroom. If that stuff is done, at the same time, even if then one is going to go to bed and the other is going to go and read a book quietly or do a puzzle, that's okay. It's okay. But the bedtime routine has begun for both. So a lot of you are going to be probably watching this because your juggle is m more with two very little ones because that's when it is the hardest and the biggest juggle. So if you are talking about a very young baby and uh, older baby or young toddler and it is a big juggle, what can you do when you, you know, physically need to be holding the baby? How do you do that on your own? So with bath time, if you can have a toddler safely in a bath, you're right there by their side and you've got a baby bath next to the big bath and you can be bathing baby and there with one hand there in case toddler needs you at the same time, that's one way you can do it. You can also get safe baby um, bathing equipment that you can put into the bath next to the toddler and then you can bath both of them at the same time or you can let them go in one at a time. Um, you can use a baby bouncer seat um, or a baby uh, safe kind of like play mat zone where you can have baby safely in an area on the floor near you and be hands on with one and then you can swap them over that way if you need to. But by having them in close proximity um, is gonna definitely help you because then you have your eyes and your hands um, there to keep both of them safe. And safety is the main thing when you're juggling little ones and water and bath times especially. And this is if you are bathing them both, you might not be. Okay, so then you're gonna get them ready and changed for bed. What can the older one do for themselves? And that's a great time to encourage that. But encourage rather than command them and you know, you don't want to come across like, I'm too busy with the little one, you need to do it yourself. That will create jealousy and resentment. But just, oh wow, you managed to put that on yourself and you know, looking at this one, you'll be able to do that one day when you're bigger and just making it very positive and reinforcing that positive encouragement for the older one. Oh, you put your pajamas on by yourself, well done. Can you get your toothbrush? And you know, just all that sort of positivity around it. Um, of course, you're there and you can help both. Now, the tricky bit, once they're going to bed, 
So you're going from the bathroom activity to the bedroom and you're in the bedroom. Now this could be siblings in the same room, which we talked about in an episode recently. It could be that they're in different rooms. Whatever that looks like, decide who needs your attention first. Who do you need to put to bed first? And now this is where it can be a, a bit of a question because if you have a toddler that settles, or preschool or a young child that settles quite well to sleep, and a younger one, a baby even, that maybe needs more help from you, maybe you're using my fade out approach and you need to be sat there with them, then put the easier one, the older one, to bed first. Baby can be in a bouncy chair, again, like I said, maybe a bouncy chair or a safe seat or something within your eye, and you can then sit with the older one, do a bedtime story, say goodnight, tuck them in so they've had that attention from you, and then you can take the baby on through to the baby's room, and do the fade out approach and implement the, the sleep plan that you're doing with them. That can be one way around. The other way is if um, the baby is fairly easy to put to bed, um, you can give your toddler a couple of books or a puzzle, um, have them again in earshot, even maybe in eye shot, but in a sort of a, a space of their own, whilst you then put the other one to bed get them settled and once they're settled then you can go and take yourself to the other one and give them your one-on-one -on -one time. Um, always try to make it you know, one then the next rather than trying to do it all at once. It will just fall apart and feel overwhelming for you and like neither one of them really gets the attention they need and that can leave them feeling like it's rushed which could lead to not being very well settled as well. Um, so giving them that time with you they can wind down and settle nicely. So one, then the next, and um, I hope that really helps you with your bedtime routine strategy. Of course, this thing goes on to more than two children. It could be three children, four children, five children. Just add it on and make sure that each one, it's an age appropriate approach. I hope that helps you. I'll look forward to seeing you next time when we're gonna be talking all about newborn sleep, new babies, and how as parents we can cope with the sleep deprivation that comes with those early few weeks as well. I'll see you then, take care. Thanks so much for watching. If you've liked anything about this episode, then please leave a comment below and hit subscribe for more episodes like this. If any of your friends would benefit from seeing this video, then please do share it with them using the hashtag the sleep nanny. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon.